Hi everyone, welcome back, it's Deborah, and today I'm just gonna go through a few things, a few random things. So first of all, I had questions about this fabric. Now this is the library card fabric, and I was asked where I got it from, and the answer is I really do not remember. I've had it for a while, but if you Google library card fabric, hopefully something like this will come up, which is why I'm showing you a bit more of it. I have shown you in other videos I've done in the past, but if you haven't seen those, then this gives you an idea what to look for, particularly this yellow one here. I think that's probably like a good one to look for. So that's it, and I don't know, it doesn't seem to have any marking or anything on it, so I can't really tell you where it came from, unfortunately. So good luck if you're looking for that. I hope that you can find it. The second question I had a couple of weeks or about a week ago is rather an interesting one and it was about the scoreboard. So this is the EK Tools scoreboard that I own. It's 12 by 12 or it takes a 12 by 12 sheet. And somebody asked me, I did a review of this uh, two years ago, about two, more than two years ago. Somebody asked me recently if I was still happy with it because at the time I was happy with it and I have to say the answer is yes, I am very happy with it. It is very sturdy. It's got these diamond shapes at the back, which means it's incredibly sturdy. It hasn't warped, it hasn't broken. Even the little back things here haven't broken. And I mean, I haven't treated it, you know, super well. I mean, I just keep it on the table, but if I'm using it, I just sort of toss it aside. I don't throw it down on the floor or anything. So I'm not, um, this is just my opinion. I don't get anything for doing this, but I'm just letting you know because somebody asked. So it's the EK tools. The scoring tool goes in here. I must admit, I never keep it in there. I keep it in my pot so that when I'm looking for it, I go to my Razcock cart, which you just heard rattling around, and it fits in here. So it does actually go, it's got that little notch in the side. So when you put it in to the thing in there, it comes up really easily because it's got the notch there and the notch in the actual tool itself. But as I said, I never keep it there because I use it for so much more than just scoring. You can also make envelopes with this. There is a, a, a um, triangle piece that sits in here, a yellow piece that's in the drawer. I don't use it for that at the moment because I've got my envelope punch board but if I want to make an envelope that's a different size to what I could get on the punch board, then I would use it. I haven't had that need in the two years or so that I've owned it. But just giving you an update on that, I'm still a fan of this and I like um, EK Tools, EK Success they used to be called and they make um, punches and things like that. And I've got a couple of their punches which I really like too. So it's a big tick from me on that one. Now, the other thing is, oh, and I should just mention that I have used a couple of other scoreboards because I've used them at the shop when I haven't had my own, or if somebody in a class said, how do I, you know, can't do this scoring, can you help me? I have used theirs and I'm um, not quite very successfully, I'm afraid, because I'm finding that some of them, the channels are really low and I'm not deep enough. and. For me, it, they didn't really work. And I know you can get ones that come on the cutter as well. And I, I wasn't a fan of those. I actually reviewed a fair few of them before I bought that one. So the next thing I got asked is about signatures. And I think in particular, I think this was from Elizabeth. Can't, I'm pretty sure Elizabeth asked the question. And I think she was talking about this one. And her question was, how many signatures do I put in a journal? And the answer is that it's varied. And she said that she was struggling with that and wanting to know how you determine how many signatures go in. So I've pulled a couple of things out just to show you as a bit of a review. So this one here, this is the Stamperia one. It may not even been this one that she was asking about. But with this one, I've actually got a whole heap of papers in there. Actually, I think it was a different one that she was asking about, so I will actually get that one out too. But it just depends on what you want to do. So it's not, there's no set formula for how many, how many um, signatures you put in a journal. 
This one's only got one signature, as you can see there, if I get it in frame for you. It's got multiple pages within that one signature. And again, the number of pages is up to you, what you feel comfortable with, how thick you want your signatures to be. I can do a quick count on this one for you, so you'll know, because I know then you'll say, oh, well, how many do you put in? So this has got the little pocket on the side as well. This was from a class that I did this one. So this is or a class that I ran rather than that I did. So this has got the front cover and it's a soft cover. So I've got one and then I'll only count the big pages. So I've got two, three, four. I've got this little half one. So we'll count that five, six, seven, eight, nine, this is 10, that's all in one, I think, yeah, 10. And then this flaps out. 11, 12, 13, 14, and I think this is the center, 15. So there would be a matching 15 on this side, so that is 30. So basically 15 sheets of paper plus the back and front cover, and also um, the little things that go in there. So there's quite a bit you know, it's not huge. It's probably three quarters of an inch, maybe an inch big. So that's not a really, really big one. And then this one I pulled out just to show you that you can go crazy and get super big with them. And this is my travel journal, which is a work in progress and probably will be for a while to come. The signatures are all in. It's just I haven't filled it all in and I've just made this little bag that I've keep it in. I make bags for my journals just so that it keeps the dust out. So this one here is massive. So let me get my ruler and measure that for you. It is four inches across the spine. So pretty chunky and I've done that rather cool thing with the elastic where I've used the eyelets and put the elastic through. That's the only one I've ever done that on and I was quite happy with how that turned out actually. And there are videos on how I made this one. If you want to have a look, there's actually a playlist on this travel journal. And it is, as I said, pretty chunky. So I have five signatures in this one. They are all different sizes though, and they are removable because I've got the elastic. So when I work on them, I can take them out. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so there's five signatures across there. And there are different pages in each of them, different number of pages. So this is the smallest one at the moment, I think. So let's count the pages. I've got one, two, three, four. I won't count that one. Five, six, oh, six, yes, yes, seven. So that's seven. So I've got seven or 14 pages, but if you take front and back, that's 28. So when you're, if you're buying journals, or if you're selling your journals and you're letting people know how many, I usually say that there are, you know, for this one, I would say that there are 14, 14 pages, which is that, but counting front and back, that makes 28. And then this piece here is much bigger. I also have all these postcards on the edge of that one. So that's a lot chunkier. So I probably have, let's say if I have um, 30, minimum of um, 30 pages in each, then I've got 150 pages. So I've got heaps and heaps of surfaces to write on, probably more than that in this one. It is fairly big. It barely fits into this actually, because it's so big. But it is one that will fit in here. I didn't make an, another one for it and it wouldn't fit, so I had to get it out and change it over and switch my journals around <laughs> so that it would fit in where I wanted it to. And then this is the one that I got the question about. So this is the Stamperia journal that I made. And this was the actual journal that they were asking about how many signatures do I have in this one? And the answer is that in this one, I only have three signatures. So it's not terribly big, this one, but I really like what I did with this one. So it's, um, it's not going anywhere. I'm keeping this one because I put a lot of effort into it. So within each signature, I've got one, two, three, and this is a page, yes, four, that's quite thick. 
It's hard to tell sometimes. Five, so with that one I've got 10 in that first signature. Then in this second signature, I'll count this little one. One, two, three, four. I think there's another one there. No, it's all really big. Four, five. So in this one I've got 10. And then in the last one I have got one, two, three. So I've only got three pages in the last one because again it's quite thick. So if you're talking about um, so this one with three would be six, but 12 surfaces. So that's how you would do it. And this, these two have got 10 pages each. So if I, um, I said one, two, three, four, five, didn't I? So double that, yeah, 10. So that would be 20 in this one and 20 in this one. So that's how you work it out. So as you can see, your signatures don't have to be the same amount of pages in them. And you can put as many signatures as you like within a journal. It really is up to you, as you can see. So you can put a few, you can put one, you can put five, you know, whatever fits really. And it all is determined by the spine size. So that determines how many signatures you can get in. The bigger your spine, the more signatures. And hence, with my travel journal, I actually redid that spine because it was bursting out. If you don't have that, then you will get this sort of look. So it'll open up like this. It'll be like a jaw mouth if you have multiple, you know, too many signatures in there. So if you don't want that to happen, then you have to have a thicker spine. That is probably a good way to determine. And then in terms of where you put them, if I've got multiple, so I'll just grab back my multiple one again. If I have multiple signatures, then I usually leave a gap between them to allow for growth within the journal as I add things in. So a good idea of a size in terms of that would be about a half an inch between each one. So you can see there, that's about a half an inch in here. So as it grows, because they're not you know, if you, you can't put them right in the same thing, you need to separate them out. So as it grows, it's got room to actually, for these pages here to expand out a bit because I haven't put them right up against each other. Now, that is not to say that's the right way to do it. That is just how I do it. And I'm sure there's plenty of people who do it differently, but I taught myself to do it, so you know I don't know the right and wrong of it. I'm just telling you that the way I do it, so that because somebody asks me. So now I've just got this piece of card, and I wanted to show you how I work out how many signatures I'm going to get. For a start, you need to measure your spine. That's step one. So if I'm measuring a spine like this one here, as an example, then I'm measuring that, and that spine is just about two and a quarter inches so I knew that I couldn't put too much in there but I want to make sure that I get enough signatures in there so I would start with a piece of card it can be longer and I'd measure the center of that card so this is a four inch piece I'm measuring it at the two inches now I'm drawing this in pen so that you can see what I'm doing so you'd measure that at the four inch and then you want your next signature to sit. Now, half an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch might be quite good if you're going to do three signatures in this one. So I'll just measure again from the centre line and come out three quarters of an inch. And that's there. And this is the line that your signatures are going to sit on. So what you need to do then is obviously measure your height of your um, piece, your book. And I usually cut this piece of card maybe like a half inch smaller than the height of the book. So uh, this is seven inches. If I had a, a book that was eight inches tall, then this would be good for that, or seven and a half inches, because then that probably seven and a half, because that would come in a quarter of an inch from either end of the book. So I don't like this piece to be right up the top of the book. Again, that's a personal preference. And then in terms of making your marks, then measure this piece and half again. So divide it into half and then 
put your line across. Now you can hide all this by flipping it over once you put it in the book, once you've marked it up so you don't see these lines. And obviously I draw them in pencil normally. So you can draw them in pencil and then you can rub them out. So then I need to make sure that I've got the enough holes that it's going to hold the book together. I don't want them too wide and I also don't want them too close to that centre line. So for a piece that's this size, I would probably come to about that two inch mark either side of the centre line. I might go two and a half, but you know, two inches or the, you know, the two and a half, which is here. Let me just look. Oh yeah, I'll probably go to the two and a half inch actually. Two and a half might be better. And I'd measure that on both sides. So coming up to two and a half inches on this side and this side, and then draw another line across there. And then across here as well on the bottom. And this gives you the points where you're going to stitch. So each of these points, and I always do at least three, you can do five if you're doing this binding method. You can have five points at which you stitch. But I find three is enough, I rarely do five. If it was a really tall book, you'd probably want to do five. But for, for a journal that's, you know, my journals are usually like six inches by eight inches tall, because that's a pretty standard of a hardback book that kind of fits a journal that size quite nicely. And you mark these points here. And then you can use this to sew your signatures in. So one signature would go here, one on this line and one on this line. So obviously what you need to do once you've marked them, I usually then punch the holes. So I just grab my pokey tool. And what I would do then is just punch some holes in this. So just in those three points on each of those lines. So you're punching your nine holes. And that means now I've got nine holes. So what I would then do is I would use this to see whereabouts in these spines. So you've got a folded piece of paper. You need to put this on top in the crease where it folds and make sure that it's the right um, top and bottom is in the right place and then punch these holes through all of that layer of signatures for each of your signatures. So one at a time, you take your chunk of signature, you put this where it sits so that it's in the right position and then you push your all through this hole and you know make the holes in each of the signature pages. Then take the next one and do the same and then repeat if you're doing three or however many you're doing. And then what you do is you take your piece, so I'll just grab, let me see what I can grab here to show you what I mean. I'm just, um, I might have another piece of paper here. I get this little folder that's sitting here, this will do. It's one I'm sitting on the table still. So then, so as I said, you would then take this and put it in, obviously this is the wrong size, but, and punch your holes through. And then you've got your chunk of signatures so then you would put this here and you would sew through that row. Now it's easier, I think, to start from one end and then the next one and the next one because otherwise what you'll find, I find if you know, if you did say um, this one and then this one and then tried to do the middle one, you don't have much room to work. But again, that's up to you and how you work. So you put your fold line and it's got the holes punched in it along that line and you sew through. Now, one of the biggest traps, and I've done this a few times in the early days was, I merrily sewed the signature together and then I realized I hadn't put it down on the piece. So I had to unpick it all and sew it in. So you, you would then have your three signatures sitting against those lines there. And as I said, if you don't like the lines, you can rub them out or you can flip it over and put them on the other side. It doesn't matter. This can be a, a colored piece of paper. It can be plain cardstock. This is file folder, it doesn't matter what it is. It needs to be sturdy though. So you wouldn't use a thin piece of paper, but it can be if you've got a thick piece of scrapbook paper, that will be fine too. And then what you do is once you've got your three signatures sitting in, you then measure your spine 
lengths and put a score line down either side and hopefully you've got a about a half an inch again between the edge of the crease of your book so if this is the the width of your spine here and then you'd put your crease down there so you'd score and fold it in and then that will sit in the channel of the spine so you've got your signatures on there and then you stick this in so you put glue on the back and you stick this in so it would be folded up like this I just thought I'd do that so you'd put a score line down either side and so that would be the inside now remembering that the inside of your spine and the outside of your spine of a hardcover book are different sizes the outside's bigger because it's got to go around the outside the inside's smaller so this needs to fit in that channel that's on the inside of your book so once you've scored that you would then sit that on the inside channel of your spine so all your signatures are sitting in there you'd score it before you put your signatures in and do this piece so you then stick this in and stick these sides down onto the inside of your book and then your signatures are sitting in here now you can also then put more paper or whatever you want over the top fabric to help this stay in place once you've done that because otherwise it may pull out and I'll get this one again as an example so see there I've put some washi tape down there that's my signature piece that I've sewn in you can also see that it's a little bit not quite as tall as the book it's probably half an inch on each end that it's not as tall as the book then I've stuck another piece of card over the top and I've put the washi tape down the washi tape is more decorative than holding it but it's not too bad it will hold it so that is the same as this piece here that I've been showing you and it's probably is a you know it's the width of the spine plus a little bit but I've covered it up on the front and I would have covered it on the back too let's flick it open yep it's exactly the same on the back you can see there's my spine piece and that is how you you sew what's called a hidden spine because you can't see it at the back now for the one that I showed you before and for others I've done I, you can see the binding on the back but this is called a hidden spine and that is what I started out making I found that was the easiest for me to do until I got used to the process but totally up to you if you don't like the hidden spine then you can go for something else or you can just practice and do all sorts of things it's up to you really but that's how I make my hidden spines and so that remains in the book and obviously it's out of better paper and it's not written on in pen and stuff like that but that's how you make it now with a book where you don't have a hidden spine for example this one this is just one signature and I've sewn it straight through the book there you can see there's the there's the binding for this particular one and it is just sewn into the books directly the front and back cover and I've just sewn it through so it's all one signature and just opened up again I use a template still to mark my holes to make sure that I get them through where I want them to be and then sew it all in and I haven't even cut this one off I quite like that look of having it you know still in there and then just sew it all through the book now with this one I put a hard piece on the front so I've actually got a little channel in this front piece so I had some room to move as this grows and that's why I did it that way so that's it for today I wanted to say thank you to everyone who sent messages for my husband who's sick but recovering well and also for those who enjoyed me talking about the bus I'll probably cover some more bus ideas later on because we've been doing a bit more research since my visit yesterday so that's it thank you very much for watching and I will catch you in the next video this is Deborah cheers mm -hmm.